Let's have some fun. So let's do another one and I'll try not to have so much of a back of my head in on this one. Just in case you're wondering, the reason I haven't painted these areas is that these are going to be stacked on top of each other and I actually wanted a paint free area so I wasn't gluing onto, onto paint for a better bond but that hasn't really worked and it, it won't matter too much, it was just me being uh, precise. But um, so, okay, so let's do the, um, the edges first. More paint. So just get all the paint on. Uh, so it's all covering. Mm. Binding a bit there. Normally means there's not enough paint. I've been a bit stingy because uh, you fill the roller and you, although you can get some of it back, you're going to hardly use any of it. not going on as well this one binding on the roller let's just move the This lighter colour is not covering so well over, over the uh, over the dark red, which is what I I suspected. But as I said, it's not as translucent as I was led to to, to believe. Even even having said said that, because the second coat. That red will actually will actually disappear. Beautiful finish, though. Ah, you see that? Over overworking it now. Should have just done that last stroke. It could be that I should have actually thinned thinned it for the first coat because look I've um, I might get it back yeah I should perhaps thin it for the first coat but it, it does add quite a lot of work to it because you've got to put it in a different container now I'm going to go with that because I think any any areas that aren't covered will be um, will be sorted with the second coat on that. I've finished applying the coats of um, the metallic finish and I'll tell you the colours I've used here. This is called Copper Fire. This is Silver Aluminium. This is Magma, Pewter and Gold Dust. Now I fancy a little bit more of a patinaed look, an aged look, antiquified, if you like. So I've actually done a paint effect putting black chalk paint on these ones here. I'm going to do the same to these ones and I'll show you how to do that. But I thought I'd just show you the two looks. So if you do decide you wanted to have a go, you can actually see here which one you prefer. Okay, 
I'm going to show you how to do the aging effect using the matte black this is chalk board paint I said just chalk paint before which could be um, confused with the um, uh, you know the, the, the paint that they use for shabby for shabby sheiking but this is actually uh, as, as you'd put on an old-fashioned school school board to chalk on the reason I use that is it's matte and I like the matte finish although I'm gonna put a little bit of, of a wax on there just to, to to bring to bring it up I don't really want these these dark areas shining out too much okay so I'm gonna put some some of the black neat black on my brush there and then I'm going to mix it with a bit of a bit of water how much really just depends on how dark you want it and it's a little bit of a um, you have to play with it to to get the right sort of finish so it's it's really practice now that's that's too that's too thick there really for what I want so I'm going to get a bit more water on there just to, to create a, a bit more of a of a wash just water here now if you get any over the edges like this you want to wipe that off immediately well when I say immediately when I've got when I've got the covering on this and as I say it's really a question of of, of practicing you can't go too far wrong uh, because you don't want anything to be too to be too uniform it's just basically what what you as an individual prefer that prefer the look whether or not you want a, a lot of black or you want a lot of um, the color shining through but as I say that's just it's just it's just practice and each one I do is slightly different from from the other okay so I've got that on on there I'm just going to take the the edges off here because we don't want we don't want streaks black streaks along there because it looks like it's paint then okay then I'm going to use this dry dry brush here to, to push it into all the nooks and crannies if you remember I said about wanting a, a sort of a, a, a stippled um, textured finish and that's what the roller achieves and it leaves all the little craters for the uh, for this effect the dark paint sits in there and you might want to leave a few areas darker than others so you don't really need too bad with that the more you do that the, the more you'll thin it out in places Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to use the hairdryer just to dry the water content of, of the paint. So there's a sheen on there at the moment, a wet sheen, and I'm going to get it down to a matte um, finish. don't want to go overboard with that you don't want to dry the paint too much then just get a damp a damp cloth and start by just pressing in going over the edges and as I say how you, how you do this is really up, up to you dab in you can do a little twist which will remove a bit more but you do have to keep turning the rag to get to a, a clear a clean part I'm 
I'm just going to flash over that again with the with a hair dryer. Clean part of the rag. And then I'm actually going to just rub up and down as opposed to dab. And this is where you can take off areas if you want a little bit showing through on a corner there. If you want to take, get the edge so it's not too dark. Change to a clean bit again. Just very, very lightly. Because the harder you go, the more you, you take off. So let's have a little bit of a, a clear bit there. There we are, you see? So you just play with it. until you get it how you want it. And if you take off too much, you can just put it back on. It's, you know, there's nothing you can really do too wrong. Just don't let it um, completely dry because then you will have a problem uh, removing any if you want to take a bit more off. Okay, so the last thing is then, just to take the, dry, the, the hair dry, and we're going to give it a, a, a slightly more now, because we want to sort of dry the paint into the, into the surface. That isn't a particularly hot hair dryer, um, even though it's a, it's a high wattage, so I was actually quite close there. So you do have to be careful how close you put it um, to, the close, uh, you know, to the surface, because you don't, want to, you don't want to burn it or burn out the hair dryer for that matter. Right, we'll do some edges. Oh no we won't, we'll do this side. This is unusual, this one, because where this is the bit that the books are going to go against here, so this side's painted, whereas uh, as well as that side, whereas with the others, um, it isn't. Okay, just checking that that was all in shot. So let's do this one. in here too much because um, that's going to be covered. There's, as I say, there's not a lot of science behind this on how much paint you put on. It's just a question of getting a getting a feel for it. I could be using a bigger brush but I, I dirtied this one so I thought I'd continue with it. It's fat better it's fine for the smaller bits. Okay, a bit more over here. Quite fun this bit actually. 
and then onto your your dry stipple brush. Forgot to take the edges off there, didn't I? But I can do that now. drier the brush the more paint it will um, it will take off you try not to brush that way because you end up with strokes in there which you don't really want okay so I'll uh, do those edges do those edges now Arguably, I took a little bit too much off, off there, but I'm going to go with that. But that's no, that's looking a little bit too. Too bare. So I'm just going to go back. Just put a bit more on. Going back to the uh, the 80s and the 90s with all this ragging, as I think they used to call it. They probably still do. Okay, so let's go with that. And let's take it down to what we like it to be so a little uh, okay that's not doing much now so I'm guessing that this is going to be quite black that bit there yeah there we go so let's So what motion you do is really up to up to you. Motion with the rag that is. Remember the harder you press, which is logical, look my nails just caught in there and done a couple of scratches, that's all right.
just worth remembering that no one's going to focus on any particular part of one of these these panels it's the overall look that's important so that's the cover point there let's have a little bit of a of a bare area showing a bit more colour through So a little longer with this one here because we're gonna we're sort of fixing it to the surface. If there is something you really don't like at this point, um, a little bit more water on. Well, this is a part that was not going to be seen, so I've just put a bit more water on there. And you can still remove it. You just need to put a bit more, a bit more effort into it. It's still coming off. In fact, arguably, you could, you know, some people will prefer that cleaner, that cleaner look. Just need a little bit more time and a little bit more elbow grease on there. Okay, to the edges. Don't need to be quite so precise on these, as long as you get a a good amount of. black on there they sort of look after themselves There. It's quite nice having those a little bit cleaner. So this video isn't too long. I think you get the, the gist of that. I'll finish off these edges off camera. Rick has left the workshop.